uh, the stormy weather uh, earlier today to get here. So, um, for those of you who haven't been here, this is kind of a uh, that we've been doing on Wednesdays throughout the uh, fall, winter, summer months. Uh, we just like to kind of get together and uh, talk about different subjects within Christian uh, faith, Catholic faith, um, and welcome speakers to come in. So, thank you to all of you who are new to us, new to our group here tonight. Uh, for joining us uh, tonight, uh, we're very lucky to have uh, Scott Williams here uh, to give a talk on really our life uh, in, in telling that story. So, very excited to, to hear what he has uh, to offer with the group. Um, so, Scott he is originally from, from Indianapolis. Uh, he's born, he was born and raised there, he's been there, he's been there his whole life. Uh, I didn't ask where he went to school, if he did go to school. Um, but I do know that just recently uh, did find a position employed with the Archdiocese of Indianapolis. Um, and he's a program coordinator. Um, and he's a brand new position, so he's, he's loving it. He's living close to downtown. Uh, and he's having a great time. Uh, so, uh, so a little other kid. I love to meet Lowe. I guess that was, a, that was a one fun fact. He asked he did specify, he did specify it has to be your mom or something. It can't just be your mom. So. Um, again, thank you all for coming tonight. Um, before we get started, I would just ask that uh, your father at one day is he can uh, please do this one Hey, Julia, go get the phrase here. Pray, Julia. Say hi to you. Let me go out and play here for this uh, season of Easter. We had to pray for the upcoming Easter uh, uh, Pentecost. As we bless our gathering here tonight, so all those who are over the night, bless us with a real appreciation of the many gifts. And as we welcome our guests to here tonight, uh, may you find that his words an uh, echo of your own. And they had echoes through us and working on your spirit. We pray these things in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Shut up. I got to do it at that. Is that how you felt? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to stand over here. Um, you guys hear me okay? All right. So, like any of you around said, um, my name is Scott Williams. For the past three years of my life, I've been working at St. Jude Catholic Church as the coordinator of the ministry there. Uh, had the time of my life, but uh, God called me to do something else. My entire life has been this, this constant, uh, you know, God wants me to do something, and I say no. I want to do something else, and He calls me back to do something again, and then I finally say yes. So, um, like you said, I'm, I'm working right now for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis in the Office of Youth Ministry as the program coordinator. And Alex sent an email with the title of this talk, which is Your Life is a Story, Read It, Live It, and Tell It. And I emailed her back and I said, What does that mean? What do you want me to say? Uh, so, so basically, I'm just going to be covering a few things today. I've been on. Uh, yeah, come on in. So, so, I'm going to tell you the story of my life, uh, my faith journey, where I've been, uh, where God has called me in my life, and uh, then I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I apply in prayer uh, and other ways to, to continue to live my faith in a, in a Catholic cultural way, and then finally, uh, some, some ways that we can express our faith to other people in a, in a way that isn't overwhelming. So, let's start from the beginning. Uh, I was born at a hospital, like many people were born at a hospital. Uh, so I was actually adopted. I was adopted at birth, and I didn't know this at all. I went to I adopted, and uh, my mom asked about some some genetic uh, disease, things like that, history, family, family history.
just and even in middle school. Sorry to trip you, but if I was home and it was convenient for me, for school, maybe I'd go to math studies. But something that I didn't realize is that something was missing in my life. Really? I had this hole in my heart that I wasn't sure what to fill it with. So I started filling it with different things in the world. Throughout high school and college, a lot of my college years, um, I searched for that. Whether it was just through material things, whether it was with, in bad relationships, whether it was you know, drinking. There'd be nights that I go out Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. Because that's what everybody did. That's what was encouraged. That's what was expected of you as a teen and somebody in your young 20s. I'm sure a lot of you have experienced that as well. Um, but then, throughout my college career, somebody uh, eventually invited me to a young adult mass, which was, was kind of exciting for me because I still kept to the title Catholic. I liked the idea of being Catholic, but I wasn't sure exactly why. There was always something beautiful to me about the liturgy and about the mass that kept me uh, coming back, whether I was going through the motions or not. It was something that was consistent in my life. It was always there, even if I wasn't there. So I went to this young adult mass. I had no idea what it was, but I came uh, with, I don't know why, it was totally out of care to me. I was being very vulnerable. Um, I wasn't sure what I was doing there. So I did what every uh, Catholic does, and I sat in a back row, because, because that's where you sit when you're not sure about things. So I sat in the very back row, and that was at St. John's. You guys ever been to St. John's before in downtown? Um, so, so the altar was like 200 yards away. Um, I was in the very back. I could barely tell what was going on. But it was, it was beautiful. This was the first time in my life, I grew up for the past 20-some years of my life. I, was, I went to Mass on a regular kind of basis. But this was the first time I went to Mass, and people were intentional about the reasons that they were there. They were intentional about their faith. And they didn't say it, they didn't, they expressed it. They bowed when it was time to bow. They were reverent when it was time to be reverent. The entire thing was beautiful. Uh, so, at the end of that Mass, uh, Father Rick was, was celebrating that Mass at the time. And at the end, he, he invited me to uh, this silly thing called Theology on Tap. You guys ever heard of it? Yeah. Uh, so, again, I was like, okay, I'll give this a shot. I had no idea why. I was never a kid that went to youth group. Never. I, I went through the sacraments, checked them off, uh, went to Sunday school when I had to, checked it off, um, and now I was at a bar. Basically, it, it came out of this. Um, I like beer, and I was looking for beer. I still like beer a lot. It's one of my favorite hobbies. Uh, but I went there, and it really challenged me in my faith. In a way that I've never been challenged before. They touched on some really hot button issues. And I got, to be honest with you, I was pissed. I, I didn't know uh, that the Catholic Church teached this. I didn't know that the faith that I grew up in um, was against this or, or had no rules about this. I, I can't remember exactly what it was. I think it was cohabitation. I was I just never saw the big deal to what that was. But what that did was it led me to go home and research more about my faith. So I went home, I got on the Google machine um, and I started to look up different different things about Catholic teaching. I looked through them uh, through a Catholic lens. And I started to learn the truth about the Catholic faith. That was something that I'd always been reserved about. Because you don't want to be that person that comes out and is going to disagree with the rest of the group. So here I am at a bar downtown. Uh, I didn't tell anybody where I was going because I was a little bit embarrassed by it. But 
the, the wonderful thing was people greeted me, people welcomed me, people wanted to know, legitimately wanted to know about my life. Which before is just like, you know, do people really care about you? If you go sit down somewhere else, are they going to ask you about your life, about what you do, uh, and truly care about you? I mean, they didn't force anything down my throat. Um, they didn't force anything down my throat. They didn't uh, try to save me that day. Um, but they they just treated me like a normal person. And that was, that was unique to me. So I came back another time. They raised another house on a mission. This one was something really high. I can't remember what it was, but some guy got up and left. I was so mad. And I just thought I was somewhere. So I was like, calm down, dude. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Uh, but I continued to call him. I didn't stop coming. Because I wanted to learn more. I wanted to seek more. I wanted to be fed. Because this is a way I've never been fed before. These people were standing up on the bar talking about controversial issues like that through 20 some years of my adult life. Or my adult childhood. Nobody ever bothered to tell me that I So I went through my public school career learning about my state through friends and sexual But now I'm learning about my faith as well. And it all makes sense. It's like all these pieces of the puzzle come into place and I finally made those beautiful, beautiful pictures. And I'm still putting the pieces together, but what, what I've seen so far has been absolutely amazing. So after I graduated college, uh, I went on the most incredible journey of my life, and I don't exaggerate that in any way, shape, or form. So have you guys ever heard of Crossroads? Crossroads? It's a pro-life organization that organizes walks across the country. Once again, I had no idea why I was doing this. I just graduated from college. I didn't have a job. Uh, I was working at Menard's Drive in a forklift part-time. Um, and by the way, I was the best forklift driver in the Midwest. Okay? But that was not a career I was wanting to make. Um, I studied public management. I wanted to work in local government. The time I graduated, there was a hiring freeze in the city of Minneapolis. That was like the worst time to graduate college ever. So, I didn't know what to do. And for some reason, it was the day of graduation. It was Sunday. It was Mother's Day. I was sitting on the couch. And I was thinking to myself, okay, I've graduated, what should I do now? And that was the, the giant violent pattern in the back of my head. I thought of the time that Crossroads came to my home church on St. Francis and Clare. And they came and they talked about this journey that they were on, about how they were promoting the pro-life movement, and how they were walking across the country. So I graduated from college, and I thought that just sounded like a good idea. I thought it would be fun to see the country. And that, that was basically my only agenda at all. Was, I wanted to go on an adventure. So two weeks later, I was on the plane to Seattle, Washington. Um, and we walked from the Space Needle to the, to the steps of the Capitol in a span of 12 weeks. I'm not going to get into the depths of that story. That's a whole different uh, talk in and of itself. But the first day that I was down there was a Wednesday. And uh, everybody in the group was like uber Catholic, and I just wasn't yet. And I wasn't sure what was going on. Um, and they were like, come on, we're going to Mass. And I was like, it's Wednesday. Did somebody die? Like, why are we going to Mass on Wednesday? I had no idea that people did that. So, so we go to Mass on a Wednesday, and I was like, all right, I'll do this, whatever. And I was like, well, this is a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same. Um, so that day we went back, and we kind of went into the hours, another thing, it was more into me. It was like this, this like, cultural immersion into the Catholic faith. And then the next day rolled around, and it was Thursday, and they're like, hey, we're going to Mass. So I was like, did someone die again? Why, why are we going to Mass again? I don't get it. It's not Sunday. What are we doing here? So Thursday rolls around, and we do the same thing Friday. Saturday we go to an abortion clinic and we carry a rosary out front. Something I've never done before. Uh, it was closed when we went there. We went to Mass. We went to Mass again on Sunday. We went to Mass again on Monday. We went to Mass every single day for 12 weeks. Except twice. Um, and that changed my life. I was around people that changed my life. They cared about me, that loved me, and that taught me about the faith. So, after that journey, I really grew up with my, uh, my pro-life goal. I was, I was adopted, I was so thankful for the gift of life. 
But then when I got home, I still didn't have a job. There was no job waiting for me when I got home. It's weird, like uh, if you don't go and interview and you don't do anything proactively to get a job, you're not going to get a job. Uh, so I go home and for like the first three days, I just sat at home like watched The Price is Right and didn't really do anything because, I don't know, because I walked across the country and I felt like I deserved it. But, but the next day, I was like, something is missing. Something is missing in my life. And I realized that it was mass. It was the Eucharist. So if you receive the Eucharist for 12 months and then you go a few days without, you're going to realize that there's something missing in your life. And that's what I was missing my entire life was the gift of the Eucharist, the gift of the sacrament. Because it is so beautiful that God has to give us
months. And to be honest with you, I have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm not going to get into that. Uh, I, I've, been, I've been working a lot, but through the ministry for the past three years, and through what God has brought me to, I've been able to do some amazing things in my life. I've gone to World Youth Day twice. I've been to the Theology of the Body of Altar three times, going to four. Which has a whole different story, but totally put my world upside down again. But the most important thing is that everybody has a different talent and a different gift. And it might not be in a specific ministry of your parish, it might not be, uh, you know, the item, it might not be what anybody that else is doing. But God gave you gifts and talents. For a specific reason, he's calling you to use them, but you just have to say yes. You just have to say yes to be able to respond to that call. Um, I want to get to some of the other things that you guys want to talk about. Um, so the best way for you to live an active life as a as a Catholic. Um, Young adult is a, a few different ways. I was trying to, I was trying to, uh, I was praying about this on my way down here because I have like an hour to drive. And you guys have iPhones? You have an iPhone? Um, you know how like you can make a note by saying, "Hey, make a note about this." Reconciliation. I'm going to tell you a story 
uh, about my first reconciliation in a long time. So, I, I received first communion in about second grade, um, and everybody goes to uh, their first reconciliation again. Uh, and then, myself and I'm sure other people wait like forever to go again. I was one of those guys. So, I came into the confession, I was said, forgive me, Father, for us, and it's been about 14 years uh, since my last, whatever it was. It was a long, long, long time. I was embarrassed. But everybody was doing it. So, I felt like I needed to. I was with a group of people, and they were like, let's go to confession. I was like, yeah, I do that all the time. Let's go. I just didn't know how to do it. So, so we, we, we go, and I, I'm just sweating bullets, um, like, as, as the line gets shorter. And I walk in this confessional, stumbling over my words, uh, like, already sobbing. Uh, and I, I told him it's been 50 years since my last confession. And... And he, he said some simple words to me. He said, welcome home. And, and that was something that I, I never felt before. I never felt like uh, that this was a home, this is a place. This is where God was going to be living this life. Staying close to the sacraments. Staying close to the sacraments will build and create a life of virtue. Five years from okay. now, as I hear you, we'll pull it out. I think we're doing pretty good on the phone there. So how do we witness to others without being uh, overbearing? I think this is a difficult topic for a lot of people, right? Because different people do it. Come on in, brother. So different people do it um, on different ways. But I think a lot of times it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. I was I was in a in a book study this this morning, um, and and we were talking about the way that that we evangelize to people, and we started to look at ways that Jesus evangelized to people, and he took a lot softer of a route to doing so. If you think about the road to Emmaus story, um, at the end of that story, it says that Jesus uh, acted as if he was going to continue walking, and he waited for them. To say, say, wait, where are you going? Um, when Jesus is walking on the water, it also says there it looked like Jesus was going to keep on walking. And I don't know what he was doing. It's all like he was just strolling in the ocean that day and wanted to just walk around on the water. He was going to keep away. He waited for that to say, come, I need you. Let's see, I'm going to take three years. I was around us. I overtook And there was another one that I forgot. But. But Jesus waits for us to come to Him. So I think a lot of times, the best way that we can evangelize, the best way we can share our faith is to live our life joyfully. So holiness is contagious. I don't know if you know that or not. Going back to my very first point of my reversion to my faith, it was contagious. I wanted to be the same as this. If you live your life joyfully, people are wanting to know, why are you so happy all the time? So could you smile and laugh at But I want something. Right? I want to be a part of that. Sorry. Um, but we have to be able to to be gentle. We have to be tender. We have to be <laughs> Because if we go in there catechism plays a lot, what are they going to do? They're going to turn around and say, that dude is crazy. Right? So the second thing I would say is intentionality. Uh, Pope Francis said, you can't be a part-time Christian. And that really kind of struck a chord with me because um, a lot of times, especially working in ministry, it's easy to go home and say, well, I'm doing good stuff all the time. Um, and I just want to do something else right now. I want to I want to just, you know, you get in this rut of spirituality where if you're not careful, it can lead down a dangerous path. But to be very intentional about everything you do is very important. 
to not go through motions, to feel things that, you, that God wants you to feel. So, so whiskey, that's kind of The third thing is just be real. I think a lot of times uh, people are scared away because people are kind of busy about being Catholic. Like, I just try to be a normal dude living uh, a Catholic faith. If you are you, another holy saint said this, uh, I'm really good at this, said, if you be the person that God created you to be, you will set the world on fire. Thank you. Thank you. But anyways, how true is that? If you are just you, if you are real, if you are the God, if you're the person that God wants you to be, you're going to do amazing things. Just say yes. Just say yes. Or maybe, or uh, are you sure? Okay, yes. Think about the Annunciation. Our angel came to, to Mary and said, uh, you're going to, do you, you know, you're going to become pregnant with Son of God, and she was like, "What?" Uh, but and I don't, I don't think she just said, "Yeah." She was like, uh, "Are you sure? Are you, are you really me?" Um, I, I think there was more to that dialogue, right? But in the end, she said, "Yes, yeah." yeah. I think yeah. it's like I think Mary asked the first question, didn't understand, was like, "All right, I'm just gonna go with it." Yeah, exactly. Like, there's no about to explain that. Nope, nope. But just take that step forward. You can always go back if God's not going to. But if you take that baby step, He's going to lead you in the right direction. Um, I want to leave a few minutes for, for some questions and such. So, do you guys have any, any questions? Do you, you want to know anything else about my morning? <laughs>
I hate to pinpoint it anymore, too. <laughs> well, I can certainly relate to your, to your, uh, the no's that you gave first. I mean, the, the, not really, or not me, or not now, or whatever. I, I don't think I've made any major change in my life that I didn't resist with everything I had. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but the thing is, God, if God wants you to do something, He's not going to stop calling you to do it. We want to ignore it, we want to fight it, that's fine, but he's still going to not. And if we, if we answer that door, he's going to take us on a crazy awesome ride. I got a question. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, so you talked about how kind of you were raised Catholic and kind of maybe you got some of your you know, freedom going to school and maybe you kind of were kind of just going through the motions type of, type of situation. I think many people struggle with that. I know I struggle with that going through school. Um, I'm curious if there ever was kind of a point in your moment in life where you realized, you know, maybe you believed in Christianity, but you didn't know if maybe Catholicism was really the answer. I wonder if you ever had an experience where um, you questioned that, and if there was ever a turning moment where you really just thought, yes, Catholicism is the answer, that's true. Right. Or it um, challenged you to pursue questions about that. I have a little bit of twist to that answer because there there was a time that I wasn't sure about Catholic teaching, but I never said I wasn't Catholic. I had no desire ever to become non-Catholic or to join another another church. But I didn't have the right vision of God. I didn't have a personal relationship with God. I didn't see God as a person. I saw Him on a cloud with levers and buttons, just controlling the universe and seeing all and knowing all. I didn't see him as the person walking down the street with me um, and breaking bread with me. And that was the turning point in my life, when I realized that it's not about um, the God on the clouds, it's about the friendship of Christ. Yeah. Any others? Nothing at all? Alright. Well, uh, I'll stick around for a bit. If anybody else wants to. Is that. You get on the awesome. Yeah, let's give them a big round of applause.
um, are kind of the, in the planning committee, if you will, for this. And, and we'd certainly love to kind of help, you know, serve the needs of our community and, and bring up some of those topics that you guys want to hear about that interest you. So, um, you know, please feel free to stop by and talk to Allie at any time if you have any topics, uh, or myself or, or anyone. So, um, I just want to say this real quick while, while everybody left. The theology on tap is an awesome tool in evangelization. That was my number four to my number three. Um, it, it had a huge impact in my life, but it can be huge on the people that are standing in the room. So don't think of it just as a social group that you see at, at a bar, at the Columbus bar, but you can be here being this witness to everybody else. Uh, you're evangelizing to all these people that were sitting behind her, the waitresses that are coming through, and everybody. I've seen it happen. When I, when I started going with Theology on Tap, uh, I wanted more, and I ended up being on uh, many of the in the past five years because I believe in the mission. I believe in uh, what it's all about. So don't necessarily underestimate coming. It truly is uh, very, very important. Sorry. Just want to add no, Rich. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. You're absolutely true. And it, it's, and it is, it's kind of, and I really appreciate, you know, Scott dealing through that because it is kind of a loud environment too. And it, sometimes I'm sure it's very difficult as a speaker talking about some of these issues in public, but that's, that's a kind of organization. That's, I, I just applaud the encouragement of our speakers that come here to do that. Um, just at CB here, so. Uh, so Allie, do we have any announcements? I have one other thing. In two weeks, Father Doug is going to be coming. It's. And so I brought some little cards. If you're not going to be here, even if you are going to be here, if you want to write down some questions, um, you're more than welcome to ask when he comes. And we'll just, it'll just be a dialogue between Father Doug and everybody that's here. But if you want to write down some questions, please feel free to do that kind of along the lines of topics you're all interested in, just those burning questions that you want to ask a priest. And you can make a straightforward answer just here in this environment. So feel free to do that. Just don't ask him what his most interesting confession was. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to ask. Or, or the most boring confession. Yeah, <laughs> most boring confession. Okay. Uh, did we get the results from the, the, the beard? Shave or no shave? Yes, the, the beard was saved. The beard was saved. Uh, he trimmed it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was saved. Okay, all right, let's get here. Those of you who don't know, Father Doug uh, had a little fun going on where you basically vote by monetary voting and uh, to keep his beard in shape. But I guess it'll live on. So maybe we'll see that in two weeks. Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> so, so that beard is worth something. Great. So anybody else have any last closing comments? All right, feel free to stick, stick around. Um, make sure when you close out, tip our, tip our waitress. Um, be generous. Uh, we appreciate them posting us here. So um, please be kind and take care of them. So, Father, would you mind closing just in prayer here? Go with us. Well, why don't we pray in the way we learn from Jesus Himself? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May Almighty God bless and keep you, O God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it.